Hi, my name is Jonathan, and today I'm going to show you how to blink an LED on an FPGA. This is basically the FPGA's version of Hello World for computer programs. I'm going to be using the TerraSIC DE0 Nano FPGA dev board, and it comes with an Altera Cyclone 4. Now what FPGA or dev board you use to learn doesn't really matter, although I'll say that Altera tools are really nice and are really beginner friendly. So let's get started. First, you need to open Quartus, which is Altera's FPGA design suite. Go to File, New Project Wizard, and hit Next. And we're going to call this Project Blinky and put it under the Blinky directory somewhere on your computer. Hit next, it's going to be an empty project. We're not going to add any files. And here we have to select what FPGA we're going to use. And so from the user guide for this dev board, it says it uses an Altera Cyclone 4 part number EP4CE22F17C6N. So go back here, sort by name, and you know we're looking at a Cyclone 4, so we'll look through the list. And it says, here we go, EP4, CE22, F17, C6, and the N at the end does not matter. So hit next, leave these options as, as they are. And we're done. We're just going to wait for it to create the project. Okay, now we need to create a new file. So file new. And this is going to be a Verilog file. So hit OK. And now we need to save this. So we're going to call it blinky.v. And it's important that this is the same name as what you named your project, your top level, you have to have a, a top level file that has the same name as your project. So it's gonna call it blinky.v and we're gonna add it to our current project. So hit okay, save. So Verilog files are basically composed of modules. And so I'm gonna create the blinky module. And it's important that the, you know, your top level module is the same as what you said it was earlier. So this says it's Blinky, so I need to call this Blinky. And this module you know, has an input, it's a clock source, so we're gonna say input clock, abbreviation CLK. And we're gonna put a little comment because we know it's a 15 megahertz clock from the data sheet. And then we have an output also. In this case, it's a register. We'll talk about that later. It's an LED. And Verilog is similar to C in that every statement has to end in a semicolon. And there's a this is a module statement. Okay, so we have an input of a clock and output of an LED. And so somehow we have to make that cause this LED to blink. How are we going to do that? Well, my strategy is to create a counter that gets incremented on every clock pulse. And then when that counter reaches, you know, for example, 25 million, I'm going to toggle the state of the LED. And so what that means is that, you know, once a second, the LED should go on, off, you know, on, off, um, once every second, or change state twice, twice a second, basically. And so I need to create a counter that's big enough to fit, you know, 50 million or 25 million. And instead of doing the math, I'm just going to create a you know, suitably large one. So this one's 32 bits. So create a 32 bit register or you do reg 31 colon zero, call this counter or semicolon. Okay, now we're gonna create what's called an always block. So in this block, basically, anytime you get a positive positive edge of, of our clock, 
it's going to do something inside there. And so Verilog is different than C in that blocks um, are denoted by begin and end, you know, rather than the curly braces. It's begin and end, unfortunately. A little harder to type out. Okay, so every time we get a clock edge, we're gonna do something. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna say, okay, if the counter is less than or equal to 25 million, so it's 25 with six zeros, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and start a new block. Okay, if it's less than 25 million, we're just gonna count up. And this is the parallel assignment operator, not a less than or equal sign. So when you have a conditional like an if statement, it's less than or equal. Inside an always block, this you know left caret equals is actually in a parallel assignment operator. So what it's basically saying is that if you have multiple of these in a row, they will all get executed at the same time, essentially, because it's hardware, you have a lot of parallelization, you can you know, instantiate multiple registers. Um, we'll get into it more later, but just for now, just remember an always block, instead of having an equal sign, you need to have this parallel, parallel assignment operator. And you can think of it more like an arrow, at saying that counter plus one is going into counter. That's a sort of better way to think about it. Okay, so if it's not less than or equal to 25 million, so we're gonna say else begin, and we're gonna say, we're gonna clear the counter. So assign counter to zero, and then we're going to assign the LED to uh, in, not LED, so essentially toggle it. So that's you know bit, um, bitwise not there. So it's saying LED is assigned you know in the um, logical inverse of it. So it'll toggle it. And so this is a better example that you know these two statements are one after another. You know in, in a programming language, this would, be, this would be executed and this would be executed because this is actually hardware, not a state machine. Um, these both get ass assigned at the exact same time. So it happens at the exact same clock edge. These two are happen at the exact same time. Okay, and so to end it out, we have a started with a module, so then we have to end it with an end module. And there we go. Now um, we'll save the print, save the file. So if Control S or File Save. And now we're going to click Analysis and Synthesis, and that should basically do a syntax check on everything, and we'll see if we got our syntax right. You get a lot of messages here. Um, for now, you can ignore them, but we'll uh, we'll talk about them later. Okay, so it synthesized correctly. Um, so the next step is to assign pins. So we'll go to assignments and pin planner. And if you look down here, it found our signals, clock and LED, and it correctly knows that the clock is an input and the, F the LED is an output. And we just need to tell it what pins they're at. And so that's where this location comes in. And so we need to look at the data sheet. And on page 14, we can see that the LED is tied to pin or ball A15. So we go down here, go to the LED, and you can double click on it and you can scroll down and select what pin it is. But I find it easier just to type, you know, pin underscore A15. That works. So it found it right there. And then so for the clock, you know, go back to our data sheet again. We'll go to page 24. And here you can see that our 50 megahertz clock is tied to pin R8. Let's go back here. Type pin underscore R8. It's good, found it down there. It's actually a clock pin too, what do you know? You close out of this, you don't need to save it. And then we'll just continue on. And so, start. 
and comp compile the whole design. Okay, compiled successfully. And so the next step is to program the device. And so we'll go to this program device option and double click. And you should see this programming window and make sure that your programmer is found. So here, go to hardware setup and you can see that it found the USB blaster. Um, if you don't see that, you need to figure out why. It might be a driver issue. We're in JTAG mode. Let's go to auto detect. Might see a warning pop up at first, but just hit auto detect again and it will, should sort itself out. It says it found two devices or that have the same ID, but we know it's an EP4 CE22. So select that. Okay, now we're gonna double click here on file and we have to go to output files and then blinky.sof, open it up. And so here we're gonna check program configure and hit start. And it should be successful. So now I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here you can see that it's blinking now on and off about once a second. So there you go. All right, have fun.